Meshtastic, and APRS. There's a lot of similarities, but there's some glaring differences. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys, Jason, KM4ACK. One of the questions I'm often asked is, what is the difference between Meshtastic and APRS? And while there are a lot of similarities, there are a few big differences. You don't have to be Team Meshtastic or Team APRS. You can certainly be Team Both. There's a lot of different reasons to use both APRS and Meshtastic. Now, a few of the things that they share and are very similar on are messages. We can do both group chat or one-to-one -one messages with either Meshtastic or APRS. Both of them can also give you a clue about what's going on in the world around you. APRS uses something called objects to put things on the map, and that could be all kinds of various things, from maybe the location of your field day site to the location of Hamfest, to even marking closed roads during or after a storm. In the Meshtastic world, well, we've got waypoints. Waypoints are very, very similar to objects in APRS and just allow us to mark different things on the maps. Now, here is where one difference comes into play. APRS will take an object, send it out a few times over a pretty brief period, say, three times over a five-minute period, and then it will start to send it out much slower uh, from that point going forward. But if an APRS station comes into the area that wasn't there when the original object was sent out, within about 10 minutes or so, it should see that object on the display or on a map, depending on how you're running APRS. In Meshtastic, I haven't found that to be the case. I have found that you need to get the waypoint as soon as it, as it is sent, or the originator of that waypoint needs to resend it uh, if the other station was not in the area at the time it was sent originally. So that is a little bit of a difference. And guys, if I'm missing something uh, with waypoints, somebody please uh, clear it up for me down in the comments. But I've only spent a few minutes working with waypoints, but I didn't see that they would repeat themselves after that initial transmission. Now, both services will beacon out your current location, assuming your Meshtastic device has a GPS built into it. And even if it doesn't, most of the time you can share your phone's GPS to your Meshtastic device. But both of them will beacon out your location and put you on a map for others to see. Another similarity between the two is they can both work with or without the internet. So if you don't have the internet, but you've got two Meshtastic nodes that can see one another, or two or three in a line, and they can keep uh, hopping that message between them, well, you don't have to have the internet in order for that to work. Same thing with APRS, as long as those two radios can see one another, or they can go through a digipeter on a high enough hilltop, they don't need the internet to work. However, with both services, when we add the internet to it, we kind of expand the capabilities of both APRS and Meshtastic. Some of the pros for APRS. First of all, it's just got further reach with a single transmitter, uh, and that's just due to using two meters versus using 950 megahertz, which is what Meshtastic is here in the U.S. So you can just cover more distance with two meters. In addition to that, we can also run higher power in ham radio. So it's nothing unusual at all to run 50 watts with APRS. Infrastructure is another big asset for APRS. Now, this doesn't cover everywhere in the world or even everywhere in the U.S., but APRS has been around a lot longer, and there's a lot more high-level digipeters for APRS, so it has better coverage area most of the time compared to Meshtastic. And then there's just more services available. Now, keep in mind, services do require an internet connection at some point along the line with APRS 
in order for them to function correctly. But we've got uh, services like WXBot that can get the weather for you, the repeater service which can find nearby ham radio repeaters, and the SMS service which can move an APRS message to somebody's cell phone. And again, I think that's just because APRS has been around longer and we've had more time to play with it. I'm sure as time goes on, a lot of these services will be added to Meshtastic as well. Now there's downsides to APRS as well, especially if you're comparing uh, APRS to Meshtastic and which one you might want to dive uh, deeper into. You need a license in order to use APRS. Now, that's perfectly fine for me, but I can't put my wife, who is not licensed, on APRS. So you have to look at your situation and who you want to be able to communicate with and figure out if everybody is a licensed radio operator, you might go with APRS. But if you've got non-licensed people in your group, Meshtastic might be the better choice. APRS can also be more difficult to get configured and working correctly right out of the gate. Uh, with radios like this Kenwood D72 or even some of the uh, UV Pro radios by BTEC, well, there's just a lot of different settings that we've got to cover in that radio. Then, if you want to take one of these radios and connect it to your phone so that you can get a nice offline map, well, that's even more configuration that we've got to take into account. Now, there is a lot of configuration on Meshtastic as well, but I think APRS is a bit more cumbersome to get initially set up. Once you're familiar with it, it's not bad at all. But if you've never messed with it at all, I do believe it's a bit more cumbersome. Now, while we're talking about setups here, if you don't connect your phone to one of these radios and run an application like APRS Droid, or APRS.fi on your phone, well, that means you're stuck typing on this keypad. And this is like going back to 1992. It will work, but it's just not a pleasant experience the same way it is typing a message out on your phone. Now, the last one I'm going to mention as a con, and I put it here in this category, although you might disagree with me, is we can't encrypt anything on the uh, amateur radio bands. So that means we can't encrypt any messages that are sent over APRS. That might be critical for you to be able to encrypt that data and keep uh, sensitive information private, or you may not care and you can just send it out over APRS with no worries whatsoever. That's going to depend on the individual operator and their preferences. Now, let's talk about some of the advantages when you're running Meshtastic. First of all, depending on how many people you're trying to equip, cost could be a factor. Meshtastic radios, like this little ThinkNode M1, are definitely cheaper than an APRS radio like this BTEC UV Pro. And this is one of the cheapest APRS radios on the market right now. So if you're trying to set up uh, communications for three or four people, well, let's just take four people. You're going to be out close to $800 buying four of these radios. They're actually about $165 a piece, but we'll round up for the sake of me mathing on camera. Take this little node. These are about 50 bucks a piece. So you can spend $200 and get into Meshtastic or $800 to get into APRS. And depending again on how many people you need to equip, that cost could be a major factor for you. A couple more advantages with Meshtastic. Well, we don't need a ham radio license in order to use these. So we can put these in anybody's hands and allow them to communicate even without having any sort of license whatsoever. In addition to that, because this isn't on amateur radio bands, you can also use encryption. So there again, if you need to protect some sort of private data, you can do that on Meshtastic. And finally, since most of these devices are designed to be connected to your cell phone where you use the cell phone app in order to communicate with it, well, we just get a better user interface right out of the box. So it's much more familiar to someone that's not an amateur radio operator. Uh, it, it's much easier and quicker to get them up to speed using the Meshtastic interface than it is to try to use APRS for messaging.
Now, not everything is perfect with Meshtastic either. There are some pretty big limits with this. For one, the reach of these devices is much shorter than having an APRS radio, and that's pretty much because we're limited on the power output that we can use on the 915 MHz band here in the U.S. So you're going to need more of those devices, or you've got to get some higher nodes to have the same level of coverage that you would have with APRS. And there's just absolutely no way to get around that fact. Now, in my area, it's growing, but still the coverage area is nowhere near as good with Meshtastic as it is with APRS. One of the downsides to Meshtastic is we have a lot fewer services available to us. However, I'm seeing more and more of those starting to come out into the wild. For instance, Kelly K7MHI has been working on some new Meshtastic code that can add a lot of functionality and a lot of services on one Raspberry Pi. I'll leave a link to his code down in the description below if that's something you want to check out. So which is better, APRS or Meshtastic? Well, I don't think there's a clear answer to that. I think it depends on your individual needs and preferences. For me, I like to explore both of them. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.